Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Let everybody get on their feet, please. We have to give God some praises today. When they say unto me, let us come into the house of the Lord, we should give God some praises beyond any measure. We still here. Come on now. God is worthy of all the praises. He is worthy of the praises. Come on now. We can do better than that. We are here today in the house of the Lord. We are here to give him praises. We are here to give him glory. We are here to thank him for what he's doing in our life. Lord, if I can't think of the goodness of the Jesus and all he has done for me, my soul cries out hallelujah. Lord, welcome everyone back to the house of the Lord. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us back here today. Lord, we ask you to help each and every one of us with a heart and a mind to get ready for a word today. We are back in the house of the Lord. Let's give God some praises. Hallelujah. 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 So now we're going to get ready. Let's get our minds and hearts ready for the word of God. Let's get ready for the praises of the praise team. Let's get ready for expectation for something for the Lord. So, Lord, we thank you for this time. Let us hear it. Let us ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Come on, praise team. Drop it on us.
read a scripture you're hearing first. And it's coming out of Psalm 62. And it's just a couple of verses that I want to, to read in your hearing. And it goes such, Psalm 62. And I want to read verses 5 through 8 only. Okay? My soul waited thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. God, and God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Trust in him all the times. Ye people, pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. I just want to put that out there, family, because, you know, we have been shut in, but not shut down. God been restoring us for something great, but we have to remember who is in control of everything. Pandemic, the ramdemic. It doesn't matter. We have the redeemer, and that is Jesus. So we have to understand, God has gave our pastor, Lady Ty, a vision. I remember two years ago, we were standing like this. Now we so big, we standing like that. So welcome everybody to the FFCC, because God is doing a new thing. But we all have to get repositioned for the purpose God has for each and every one of us. Remember, it's not about us, but it's all about Jesus. And we have to keep our faith in him. Now let's go for prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come before you right now as humble as we know how. Father, we come give you all the praises, honor, and glory, Father, because we know we cannot do it without you. Lord, we ask you to forgive us for all our sins right now as we come before the throne of glory. Lord, we know we're in this earth walking around dead. Lord, but we need to be live, Lord. Help us to be not resuscitated, but help us to be resurrected, Lord. Lord, we need to be born again, Lord. Lord, we ask you to pour down your spirit in here today. Lord, I ask you to help each and every one have an expectation. Lord, have us an expectation for the Holy Spirit to fall on everyone in here today. Lord, we need the filling of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we need the Holy Spirit to fall down in this place. No matter what you're going through right now, Father. We ask you to help each and every one of us in here, Lord. Whether we sick in our body, Lord. Whether we have some kind of issue going on at home, Father. Whether our finances is not a problem, Lord, Father. Or is a problem, Lord. Help us to trust in you by faith, Lord. Because you did it all for us on the cross. Lord, build our faith up to trust in you, Lord. We ask you to bless the pastor, Lord, as he brings forth the word. Lord, let it prick each and every one of our hearts and minds, Lord. Convict us to get closer to you. So that we be a light in the midst of the darkness, Lord Father. Bless Lady Ty, Lord, the whole family, the body of Christ everywhere. And Lord, continue your blessing the praise team. As they worship, as we worship you, Lord Father. Because when the praises go up, the blessings fall down. So we ask you to be with us today, Lord Father. Have your way in this place, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Psalms 34 and 1 says, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. So why don't you bless the Lord right now? Why don't you open up your mouths and just give God a blessing? Give him a praise. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. We came here to encourage you today, and we want you to join in with us as, as we're singing. Don't, don't think about what we're going through with this pandemic. Don't think about your problems. Just come here today to give God a special praise. And I believe that when you leave here, you won't leave here the same way that you came. Hallelujah. So lift him up and give him a praise today. Hallelujah. Put your hands together if you can. Come on, move a little. Come on. Just think of one good thing that you've been blessed. I'm sure you can find. 
find one thing that God has done for you. Now think of one more time that you've been blessed. I'm sure you can find more things to grow your gratitude. Sing a song to the Lord. To the one who's been there our entire lives Sing a song to the one who's been loving us for forever Sing a song to the Lord and sing it again Sing a song to the Lord and sing it again Yeah Yeah Now we want you to join in with us I'm sure you can find one thing that God has done for you. Now think of one more time that you've been blessed. I'm sure you can find one thing to grow your gratitude. Sing a song to the one who's been loving us since forever. Sing a song to the one who's been Sing a song to the one who's forgiven us for whatever. Sing a song to the Lord and sing it again. Sing a song to the Lord and sing it again. Yeah. Come on, let's sing it to the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now let's do that one more time. Let's do it one more time. To the Lord, to the Lord, 
Hallelujah. Come on, let's shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's sing unto the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 How many of you know today that God is good? Hallelujah. There's a saying that God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. Hallelujah. So he's a good God. So let's worship him on that fact that our God is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. I said before you leave here today, you're going to receive what God has for you. I said before you leave here today, what is, it, what is it that you want? What is it that you want? I said, what is it that you want? Now I got a question for you. Is there anything too hard for my God? I said, is there anything too hard for my God? I said nothing's too hard for my God. Hey, hallelujah. I heard somebody say, stop thinking about your problems. Stop saying that your problems are big. But think about how big your God is over your problem. Hallelujah. He's the God of the universe. And he created this earth. Hallelujah. So in spite of what we see, we can't go by what we see right now. But I tell you what I can go by. What I know. And I know that my God is real. And I know that he is a healer. And I know that he's a way maker. And I know that he's a deliverer. And I know he's a mind regulator. I know he's a heart fixer. I know, I know, I know. Hallelujah. 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 So before you sit down, I want you to speak over your lives. And I want you to say this. When you sit down, I want you to say this. I know my God is real. Hallelujah. When you sit down, you can sit down. Sit down and say that. And you I know, I know, I know, I know, I know that my God is real. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I know that my God, I know that my God, I know that my God. I know that my, I know, I know. Hallelujah. He's real. I said he's real. 
I said he's real. I said he's real. I said he's real. Real in my soul. Real in my life. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. And what God has for me, what God has for you, it doesn't matter what the enemy brings up against you. What God has for you, it is for you. Hallelujah. And he's not a God that should lie. And he doesn't even have to repent. Because if he said it, all he wants us to do is what? Believe it. Believe it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Elder A. Elder A. Hallelujah. We're going to turn it into the hand. But don't stop praising God. We're going to turn it into the hands of our pastor. But Hallelujah. don't stop praising God. Come on, stand up on your feet. For you, Go ahead and stand up on your feet. You. Come on, let's stand up on our feet and give God a loud praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can't high five, but look at somebody say, we are back. 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 We are back and I'm still saved. I'm still saved. Sanctified. Holy Ghost filled. Fire baptized. You ought to give God a crazy praise right now. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let us feel you again. Let us feel you again. I need more of the Holy Ghost. I need more power. I need more word. I need more blood. I'm back and I'm ready. I'm back and I'm ready. I'm back and I'm ready. Woo! Yeah. Anybody glad, glad to be back? Anybody glad to be back? Woo! Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Whether you have a face mask on or not, there is liberty. Woo! No matter what it looked like when you woke up this morning, there's liberty. Woo! Jesus. Oh my God. Psalms 91 says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He's my refuge and my strength. My God in Him will I trust. A thousand shall fall at your side. Oh, y'all ain't talking back. Talk back to the mass. A thousand shall fall at your side. And ten thousand at your right hand. But, somebody say but. But, it shall not come nigh. It won't come close. It may hit next door, but it ain't gonna hit here. Not your family. Not your sister. Not your brother. Hallelujah. Not one of y'all. God got you covered, baby. You washed in the blood. You washed in the blood. You are washed in the blood of the crucified lamb. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah Lord. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Pardon me. Excuse me. But I've been away for too long not to come back up in here and give God some type of praise. He's been too good. He's been so good. He's been awesome. He's a mighty God. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, oh. yeah. Woo, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Woo! Y'all feel that? I feel like something is moving up in here. I feel like the Holy Ghost trying to let us know it's all right. I feel like he's letting us know it's all right, y'all. Yeah. 
I don't know if you got a praise, but I got a praise on the inside. Woo! That's all right. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, sir. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you might as well put your hands together. Yeah, that's the way to praise him. Praise him, praise him like this, the last chance. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. Has he been good? Has he been good? Praise him. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. That burden, that burden is being lifted. That weight is being lifted. Woo! Yeah, there it go, there it go, there it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Woo! Oh, yes, sir. It's happening right now. It's happening right now. I command it. I command it in the name of Jesus. But I put on my my bands this morning. 
because I knew I had to take a little bit of time to give God some praise. So I know I needed some comfortable shoes to do it here. If your shoes ain't too comfortable, take them off. But you ought to take the next 60 seconds and give God some type of praise because you are here. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Let everything. Let everything. Let everything. Oh, thank that you. Let everything. Let everything. Thank you. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Whoa. Praise Him. Praise Him. Oh, yeah. Praise Him. Praise Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Praise That's the way to praise Him. With your feet. With your hands. Yeah. With your voice. Yeah. Praise Him. Let everything that has breath. Let everything yeah. that has breath. Praise Him. Open up your mouth. Praise Him. Yeah. Give it to him. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Give it yeah, to yeah. him. Give it to him. Give Woo. it to him. All you got. Give it to him. All you got. Just praise him. Yeah. Woo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Come on, come on. Something happens when you praise him. Come on. Something happens when you praise him. Come on. Woo. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Hallelujah. 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 That's the highest praise. Hallelujah. 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 My, Hallelujah. My, my God. Oh, look at somebody say, pardon me. Look at him say, pardon me. But I'm here to praise him. I ain't come to play around. I came to praise him. I came to worship him. I come to bow before him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Six months. Six months since we've been back in here, and that's gonna be our response. I think we can take it up that next level, y'all. I, I, oh God, oh God, yeah. See, the reason why all the seats ain't full is because God has given you a space to praise Him. So I'm gonna break. I'm breaking protocol. 
But if you want to step out from where your seat is, just don't touch nobody. But you get out there, you put your praise to God right in right now. Because that's what God has said to do. He wants you to praise him. Or cause try your body. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got space to praise him. Yeah, here we go, here we go. Get your feeling. Woo! Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Come on, put them hands together one more time as we lift up Jesus Christ because there is no other God. He is God alone and he reigns supreme. He is sovereign in his house and nothing shall by any means harm you. We welcome you to First Fruits. You may be seated in Jesus' name. Y'all look like y'all happy to be here. I can see you smiling behind the mask. I'm sorry, y'all. I had to take mine off. I'm sorry. Keep yours on, but I had to take them off. But I ain't got no corona. But the word corona in Greek means crown, and I do have a crown. Oh, God! I got a crown, baby. I'm working for some crowns, baby. Yeah. Yeah. I better leave that alone. No, no. You say it out your mouth. Say, I ain't got no corona, but I'm working for a crown. Woo! Oh, yeah. I ain't gonna lie, I feel like preaching about 10 different messages. One for every Sunday we done missed together. But amen, y'all glad to be here this morning. Amen, put my next slide up on the screen, please. We welcome you to First Fruits Community Church. Amen, this is the church that's loving God and loving way. We love God and we love people. Y'all saw that when you walked into the doors in the lobby? Say, just in case you forgot, love God, love people. Anybody feel God's love in this house this morning? Man, I feel it, man. I'm so excited to be here. We thank God for the first lady of this house, Lady Ty Bellinger. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes. She going to have words in a few, but we appreciate our ministers, Minister DeWeese, Minister Tucker, Minister Stover. Praise God. We thank God for our deacons, Deacon Johnson, Deacon Jones. Praise the Lord for Brother Fred, Brother Tech, our security team, our hospitality team. Don't we have an awesome hospitality team? To our nurse, we have a health ministry. We got like five, six RNs in the house. And so we got nurses here helping make sure we all stay safe. We praise God for our musicians. Can we get up for our musicians? Let's just give it up for each other. How about that? That covers everybody. Amen. To all of our guests, we love you so much. So glad you're in the house. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. I'm, I'm certainly overjoyed. <laughs> the reason why I say that is I went on furlough for like three months off my job. And I said to the Lord, I was like, why don't I just trial test this like I'm full-time ministry, Jesus? So as soon as I stopped working for my job... Man, I think I was here almost every day to, that I was off of my job. I think I was here about almost every day. And um, back then, all this stuff didn't look like this. Look. And then God dropped something in my pocket. I put it all in the church pocket. And that's why you see everything that we got in here, the way it looks now. It's because of all your giving and how God has just blessed his ministry. Minister Tucker said we was once facing in this way. When it was one unit, now we got three units. and about to get the rest of the building here in a few weeks. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. I was hoping somebody test, at least the organ testified. Woo! Y'all, I'm telling you, I ain't scared to say it. 
I'm scared. I ain't scared of nothing. I'm scared of nothing, y'all. I said we gonna have the whole building. So then we can make our transition to neck then. Oh, I'm gonna leave that be, man. But I'm saying you hear, you understand the words coming out my mouth. So you ought to praise it like this, this is your home. This is your home, y'all. This ain't just our, my home. This is our house right here. This your carpet. Those your brand new chairs. I can't, I, I, I want to share with you just how God did it, but it's so deep I can't go into it. But it's just, it, somehow God always blesses when the world is in turmoil. That God just say, you know what, let me drop something on my people. Let me do something special for my people. I might got to get their attention, but let me pull them in. Let me do something special for them. God been doing some special stuff. In Jesus' name, we thank God for all those that are chimed in online. Amen. Can we put our hands together? I do just to give understanding. I do want to set the tone and the protocol. I mean, we've been meeting for weeks and putting things together. And um, we just, we did, we did what we do, or we're doing what we do because we want to be safe as possible. And be very confident that when you come in here, you can just be relaxed. You ain't got to be worrying about nothing jumping up on you, nothing like that, but the Holy Ghost. Amen. And that's why you went through the protocol. Everybody checked in right at the front door. We do that just in case something needs to be communicated with someone. We can do that. Uh, we have a beautiful nursing ministry, and they cleared y'all to come in. Amen. Um, and then y'all are here. And you know, I appreciate your patience and how we're doing seating right now. Because we kind of feel from here over, so that's kind of why it looks like this right now. But I appreciate you, uh, you being patient <laughs> with the process. Um, what, one thing we did, we had a, a company come in and we spray everything down. Amen. So all everything you're sitting on is sanitized. If anybody's used the restroom yet, you see the total difference in the restrooms. Amen. The faucets are touchless. Trash can is touchless. Soap is touchless. The paper towels is touchless. What else is touchless? Oh, the lights. You ain't got to turn on the lights. Just walk in and let there be light. And there was light. And it was good. <laughs> I mean, we even set up the overflow space just in case. But we really, uh, we just, I want to thank the team here at FFCC for all the hard work you put in. And I know we got out here like midnight last night, making sure everything was tight. But I, I really appreciate y'all very much, man. Um, we're going to do offering a little bit differently, so you can pull up that slide on the screen there. Uh, Brother James, hit that next slide. Oh, there you go. I can't even see my brother. <laughs> there you are. That, that Mac computer is so big, I can't see you behind that Mac computer, man. But we're going to, it's offering time in the house of the Lord. Amen? Can we put our hands together? <laughs> Hallelujah. I always like to say this is an opportunity uh, for us to, to show that we're blessed, to be blessed, opportunity to give. Uh, we're doing it a little bit differently because what we're not going to do is we're not going to come up and drop an offering off. Uh, but most, I mean, about 70 to 80 percent of the members and guests and people that support our ministry give online. They text FFCC to 77977, and you get a little link in your phone. You can give securely. Uh, Y'all ever heard of Stephen Furtick with Elevation Worship? If not, look him up. He's an awesome preacher. But they use the same giving system we use, Hillsong. Uses the same thing. Bethel, all, all, we use the same gift system that most uh, church big, big time ministries are using just to make sure we have a, a really good, secure giving platform. However, somebody say, however, if you still got that green stuff, uh, you got a check or a money order and all that stuff you make payable to the church, right? Then what I'm going to ask you to do is put that in an envelope that's in front of you in your chairs and then hold on to it until after service. And when we dismiss, there'll be somebody at the door with a basket and you could just drop it right in amen sound good sound good awesome awesome so go ahead and get your offerings in your hands stand up because we're still going to do that we're going to stand up and present our offerings before the lord if you have it on your phone you can lift up your phone if you have it in an uh, envelope and i'll be honest man when i first got saved and stuff i ain't even had no money to give but i act like i had money sure i had me a little autumn had my little hand we didn't even have envelopes back then <laughs> I mean, I, I, we might have had, I didn't know where it is at. I just lift my hand up like I had a whole lot of money in my hand. Because I knew one day I was gonna, God was going to put something in these hands that I could give. Amen. And now I could give anytime I feel like giving. And you, you are the same. You are the same. I'm just speaking your future right now. You are the same. You could give as much as you want to give. 
whenever you want to give, however you want to give, because you're giving it unto the Lord. God is going to bless your basket. Oh, y'all ain't talking back. And your storehouse. He's going to supply all of your needs, not according to my riches or yours, but according to his riches and glory. Your needs are already supplied, and he's looking at your desires right now. He's looking at your desires right now. What are your desires? God said, put them before him. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we lift up this offering unto thee. We lift up this blessing to you. We know you are the provider and you are the one that opens doors that no man can shut, Lord God. I thank you for doing just that in our lives. Father, I bless each family right now in the name of your son, Jesus Christ that every single one of their needs would not only be met, but exceeded. According to your scriptures, exceeding and abundantly above all we ask or think, bless them, Lord God, in ways they could never imagine so that when we come back together next week in the same place that somebody will say, Pastor, can I share a testimony? I'm going to be like, go ahead and share it. And they're going to talk about how you did it for them. Father, I bless you now in advance for all the blessings you have given us. And shall give. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You can be seated. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I'm ready to get into this word. But before I do so, we do have one other blessing coming. So at this time, we're going to bring the praise team back up. And they're going to lead us into this last selection. Shift your heart and mind into an atmosphere of worship. Why? Because he knows your name. Hallelujah. Put your hands together and receive the praise team at this time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord, for this is the day that the Lord has made I will rejoice and be glad in it. Anybody glad to be in the house of God this morning? I mean, really glad. Not like, oh, yeah. I mean, really, really, really glad to be in the house. You know, it's one thing to come into the house of God with a mask on, but it's another thing to come into the house of God in a casket. It's another thing to come. Somebody have to bring you in here and somebody crying over your body and wishing that I said I love you and wishing so that I did this and wishing that I did that. It's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. When we left here in March, I'm gonna give it really, really fast, but my family had just found out that I was expecting. And anybody know my birthday is in March? So I was like, Jesus, I'm 41 and I'm about to have a baby? <laughs> Oh, God. But the Lord gave me peace about it. We didn't share it because we weren't, it was very early on. And, you know, Pastor has a hard time holding things, so he did tell our immediate family <laughs> so the kids knew. But, you know, from the very beginning, it was a lot. From the very beginning. And they told us that, I mean, we went through stages. At first, they told us that the baby tested for Down syndrome, and he was 96, he had a 96 per chance, 96 percent chance of being born with down syndrome so i was like jesus okay uh, i still trust you regardless of whatever we have to go through i still trust you and shortly after that we lost the baby and y'all anybody that's ever gone through that knows it's a hard thing but how many know that when god knows your name <laughs> That's why this song hits a little different this morning. <laughs> because he really knows my name, y'all. When I had to go through that, because this was in the middle of COVID, so I went through all of that in the hospital and by myself. My, of course, my husband was there, but he couldn't go inside with me. My mom was there. He couldn't go inside. So I had that time with God. And y'all, the way the Lord ministered to me, the way he walked with me, <laughs> The way he talked with me, the way that he told me that I was his own. And then to make matters, I won't say worse, but 
as they did the, you know, all the procedure for the miscarriage, I was so sick. I had fevers every day, y'all, for about three months probably. A good three months. I'm burning up with fever every single day. Not feeling well, but still going. And come to find out that there was still remaining tissue left from the miscarriage. So I had to go through that whole thing all over again. So when somebody asks for prayer, even if you don't know what it is, just lift their name up to God. Say, Lord, I don't have to know the situation, but I know you. And I know that you can go where I can't go. And that's exactly what happened. So I thank God. I thank the people of God. And most of all, I thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah for knowing my name, y'all. And if he doesn't know your name, hallelujah, don't let this day pass. Hallelujah without knowing who God is because he knows your name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, you know 
my name. Hallelujah. Can y'all sing it one more time? How he walks with you. Oh, how he walks with me. Oh, thank you. Yes, Lord, keep walking with us, Jesus. Oh, Lord, don't ever stop talking to us, Lord. Lord, don't ever forget to tell us oh, that we are his own. Hallelujah. 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 I am his own. Oh, how he walks oh, with me. How he walks with me. Hallelujah. And oh, how he oh, talks how with me. Oh, how he tells me I am his own. Thank you, Chief. I know Jesus walks with you. Hallelujah. It's a beautiful thing to know that he loves us so much. And it's often quite puzzling to me. How can God know every single person that either has existed, exists, or shall exist? It's beyond our comprehension. And I'm not just saying he knows your name. But like he intimately knows who you are. He knows everything about you to the number of hairs on your head, <laughs> to the, num the number of scars in your heart. He knows every trial you've been in, been through, been around. He knows your victories and your failures. He knows all that stuff. And so don't think this morning that God doesn't know because he does. He knows more than you could ever imagine. And it's because he loves us. That's really what it is because he, he, he's so in love with us that he wants to carry us through. Anybody glad that's word time? <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, back to our regularly scheduled services. <laughs> We've been online and we, I usually start at 11 and be done at 12, but I had a feeling that wouldn't be the case this morning. So I'll just ask if y'all could stand at, at the reading of God's word. I promise I won't be here before you any longer than the Lord would keep me here before you. It's simply just my desire that you receive what thus saith God in these times. And I found it interesting where he took me to in the scriptures because one, it's not a book that many people read. Uh, it's called the book of Ezra. So if you don't know where it's at, <laughs> <laughs> it's after Second Chronicles, yeah, but it's pretty easy to find it if you have a Bible app. Uh, but take your time. We're going to read chapter 1 into the hearing of your ears this morning. Hallelujah. Give you a few moments to grab it. Thank you, Jesus. My God. We went through some rough stuff during the past six months. But God, hallelujah. And it's something I didn't say this morning, but I, I, I want to say with Shalomar and Michaela and Zion and Abraham Jr. and Madison, thank God for my awesome children. Amen. The one that we lost, I praise God for him as well. We knew it was a boy. Like, we didn't name him, but sometimes I'd be thinking like he was like a Moses because he was like drawn out of her. You know, Moses was placed in like this, almost like a womb into a floating basket that went down the river. And 
And, uh, yeah, you know, it's like God decided to draw him out. But, I mean, we ain't officially name him, but I thank God for all of our children. Amen. Zion. Look, man, all these, this wood and stuff you see up here, all of our kids done helped put this stuff together too, man. And But, see, they deal with the daddy and the uncle after, you know, the whole pastor part, you know. This stuff you see ain't what you you'll see at home. Now, I'm not saying I'm living a double life. Let me, let me, let me, let me square that away. <laughs> But I, I'm also saying that I ain't perfect. Sometimes I'm a really hard daddy, really hard uncle. I mean, I say uncle, but I feel like a dad, you know, not taking anything away from my amazing in-laws, you know, my, my mom and my dad. But, um, yeah, I know sometimes I'm hard and stuff, but, uh, man, yeah, I, lo- I love these kids. I wake up thinking about them. I go to sleep thinking about them, man. And I love y'all too. Amen. Let's go into the Word of God, Ezra chapter 1. It'll read like this. Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing, saying, Thus saith Cyrus, king of Persia, the Lord God of Heaven hath given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Next verse saying, Who is there among you of all his people? I want you to hear that. Who is there among you of all his people? His God be with him, and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord God of Israel. He is God, which is in Jerusalem. And whosoever remaineth in any place where he sojourneth, let the men of his place help him with silver, and with gold, and with goods, and with beasts, besides beside the freewill offering for the house of God that is in Jerusalem. Then rose up the chief of the fathers of Judah and Benjamin and the priests and the Levites with all them whose spirit God had raised to go up to build the house of the Lord, which is in Jerusalem. And all they that were about them strengthened their hands with vessels of silver and gold and goods and beasts and precious things beside all that was willingly offered. Also, Cyrus the king brought forth the vessels of the house of the Lord, which Nebuchadnezzar had brought forth out of Jerusalem and had put them in the house of his gods. Even those did Cyrus, king of Persia, mm -hmm, bring forth by the hand of Mithridath, the treasurer, and numbered them unto Sheshbazar, the prince of Judah. And this is the number of them, 30 charges of gold, 1,000 charges of silver, 9 and 20 knives, 30 basins of gold, silver basins, and of a second sort, 410, and other vessels, 1,000. All the vessels of gold and of silver were 5,400. All these did Sheshbazar bring up with them (laughs) of the captivity that were brought up from Babylon unto Jerusalem. Father, your word is already blessed. Your people are here. They are chimed in online. They are tuned in and they are ready to receive. Open their hearts and their understanding that they might know the might of your power, that they might understand the heights and the depths and the breadth of the wisdom and knowledge of the glory of God this morning through the spoken word. Father, we bind every devil that might be listening in, that might be trying to block the heavenlies. You are weak and there is no strength in you. And the Lord, our God, rebukes you. Hallelujah. In the name of our Son, hallelujah, that the Son of God that we serve, Jesus Christ, we plead the blood of Jesus over the house. And we thank you for victory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Man, I, I want to speak to you. You may be seated from a message entitled, a message entitled, a message entitled, The Return, 
from exile. Look at somebody say, the return from where? Exile. Uh, I want to explain to you why we opened up church. Uh, because, you know, obviously, well, we're like six, seven months into this whole pandemic, right? And uh, some churches are open, some aren't. Every house of God, I believe, is directed by the angel of that house, that pastor of that house, uh, to direct, you know, the people of God of that fold. And so I've never, ever, 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 you can ask my wife, been someone that goes along with the crowd. <laughs> I know I just, I'm, I'm kind of like that type of against the grain preacher, I could say. Like I've, I've been that way since I got saved. It seemed like God just always had me do stuff that's a little bit uh, radical. <laughs> Sometimes rubs some feathers the wrong way, rustles them up, and you know what? I really don't care because when God leads me, I kind of feel like the Apostle Paul that would I rather please man or would I want to please God? And so as I, you know, fast and prayed and asked God, you know, when, you know, when should we open? When should we open? When should we open? Um... God spoke to me three different times specifically. As a matter of fact, I was going to open the, the, this house um, maybe a few months back, and it wasn't the right timing. As a matter of fact, I said I'm going to take a week and watch the cases that come in, and then that's when we had a big old spike, and, and the Lord was like, nope, not now. And finally, when the Lord did speak to me and told me the third Sunday of this month, <laughs> I was like, okay, Lord, third Sunday, is this me? Is this you? And then he confirmed it. And then he confirmed it again and spoke. When I'm telling you specifically, like I'm talking to you now, the Lord spoke to me and told me to open these doors September 20th, <laughs> to 2020, because he wants the doors of this house open. And I was so excited. And I, like, I felt, I don't know why my mic keeps going on. I felt like King Cyrus. Because we know that King Cyrus, the Lord, stirred up his spirit. Hallelujah. So when God stirred my spirit, I felt like Cyrus. And now I understand why God told me to come here. Because we are in the context of the scripture dealing with uh, the people of God who they had no songs they were singing. And if they did, they were ridiculed. If the organ or keyboard or drums was playing and they were trying to sing songs, they were singing songs in captivity. They, they had no temple to worship in. They didn't have a place to go to worship Jehovah. They, didn't, they, they were under captivity. They had been drawn and taken captivity by King Nebuchadnezzar, who was the Babylonian king. And when they fell to Nebuchadnezzar, because of their sins, God allowed Nebuchadnezzar and his Babylonian empire to take over Jerusalem, bring all those people back to Babylon, and just like Jeremiah, the pro prophet prophesied, said that they would be there for 70 years in captivity. So now, for 70 years they were there, and then God stirred up the Assyrian king to attack the Babylonian Empire. I'm just giving y'all context. Can I take a few minutes to do that? Uh, uh, so so I, like, I believe getting in the word. I don't like surface level stuff. Uh, uh, so so, so uh, God stirs the, the king of Assyria, the Medes and the Persians, to come and overtake the Babylonian Empire. They, they, they snuck in while uh, King Nebuchadnezzar was throwing a huge citywide party. Amen. They came through the aqueducts underneath the, the city of Babylon, and they attacked and destroyed and plummeted all that was there. And God released the people of God from captivity, but then they came up under Assyrian rule. And so now Cyrus was a king that went along with every religion. So he not only believed in his gods of Assyria, but all the other gods, and then we see here in the scriptures that he must have had some type of revelation that the only God, the real God out there was this Jehovah God, the God of the Israelites. And so here we see in this passage of scripture as well that King Cyrus now, so that the words of the prophet would not fall to the ground. So what Jeremiah prophesied would happen, uh, the Lord stir, stirs up the spirit of, of Cyrus, king of Persia. 
and he makes a proclamation through all the kingdom and put it in writing saying, the Lord God of heaven has given me all the kingdoms of the earth. That's, that's a little bit much right there because he didn't have all the kingdoms. He just was kind of in pride a little bit. And also, he really is referring to the fact that God has given him Babylon. Babylon, Babylon was over everything, and God gave Babylon into his hands. So he said, the Lord God, but he didn't give credit to his gods. He gives credit to the Almighty God. And he says, the Lord God of heaven has given me all the kingdoms of the earth. And guess, this is crazy. He charges me, who is not even in relationship with him, to build the house of God. He charges King Cyrus to build the house at Jerusalem because when King Nebuchadnezzar came to Jerusalem, they destroyed the first temple. And so this is when a edict was declared, a declaration was made. He sent it out to everyone. He wrote it on paper, and he says it's time to send people back. I want you to somebody, somebody say the return. Hallelujah. It's time for the people to go back. It's time for the people to return. It's time, y'all didn't catch that, for the people to return. It's time for the people to return. To do what, Pastor? To rebuild. Oh, my God. And watch this. I want to tell you. I want to tell you what's about to happen over the next 30 days, all right? So go ahead and put that on your calendar. By this time next month, what's about to happen is God, see, God is patterning things. In this season we're in, because he's that type of guy that follows patterns. And so what he has done is he has even, 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 I know the political tension right now is crazy, but even our president of the United States, uh, maybe a month or so to go, go declare that churches were essential. So don't, don't think, don't think, I wrote it down here. The hearts of the king are in the hand of the Lord, and like rivers of water, he turns them which way he wills. It don't matter who's in office. God deals with every single ruler that's in office, so I don't care who gets voted in. I really, honestly, I really don't care because God deals with the hearts and minds of men, and so God used President Trump to say churches are essential, which actually put a sign and a seal on the fact that churches need to Go ahead and prepare in advance and get ready to put a plan together to come back together because the return is near. Oh, yeah. But watch this. So who is there among you of all his people? Who is there among you of all his people? Who, who is there? Let me tell you something. God is going to be with him. And they're going to go, they're going to build the house of God, because he's God, which is in Jerusalem. And whosoever remains in any place where they travel to, anyone that's there that can help them, help them out. What's going to happen over the next 30 days is all of you that have returned. Oh, God, y'all better lift up your hands and receive this. Don't think we come back to do the same thing we used to do. Everything has changed. You receiving prophecy this morning. All of those that have returned over the next 30 days, there are going to be some that don't have to do that like they want to do and help out. But God said, I'm going to make others give to you so you can give the help. Because here he says, you know what? Anyone that has silver, anyone that has gold, anybody that has goods, anybody that has beasts, anybody that has any type of free will offering you could give, give to these people that don't have so they can come to the house of God and complete that which I started, saith the Lord. Let me tell you something. Ain't nothing stopped during this whole pandemic. God's been doing the work the whole time. I had a man call me from Miami and said, Pastor, if you do this, God going to give you this much money. I did it, and God gave me more. I can't remember how many zeros was on that check when I saw it. As a matter of fact, I told this man about a year ago, I said, when God give it to me, we're going to upgrade. Get ready. You're going to be the first one I call concerning the instrumentation and uh, all the stuff that we got in this church. And what happened? Did I not text you? So, uh, I said, like, what are you doing? Are you working? Something like that. I text him. I was like, this is that text. Something about God that he loves us so much that in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of craziness, he knows how to make stuff happen. Right. 
Yeah, he knows how to make it happen. So he, he, he makes a decree. The king, the king, the king, the king, the king, the king. The king makes a decree. The king, the king makes a decree. He says, uh, 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 supply them with everything they need. And, and, you know, sometimes people will move off a prophetic word when they don't have it. Sometimes people got to receive something to move. Either way it goes, y'all are covered because either you're going to move off the word or you're going to move off what God's about to do. And you're going to see that what the word says always comes to pass. God is about to bless y'all. I'm telling you, all of you online watching, all of us in this house, hallelujah, it is time to return from exile. They went to Jerusalem and they had everything they needed and then some to rebuild the walls, to rebuild the temple, to bring the people back, to get back to worship. Yeah. I said, well, Lord, I, I need this and I need that and I need that. And he's he, like, when I'm telling you, he literally gave it to us. He literally gave it to us. And we got that carpet and it didn't match this carpet. I said, I want new carpet and we got new carpet. I said, Lord, we, got, uh, we need a sound booth in the back. I want this, I want that. We got it. We got a new board, new Mac computer, new vi two, two cameras on the walls that stream live now so we ain't got to hold a phone up and do it. Hallelujah. We got this. We got that. We got a brand new keyboard. We got this. We got that. We got that. But let me tell you something. It ain't about the stuff. It's just that the stuff that we have facilitates the movement of his kingdom. And everything that God is going to put in your, in your hands, hallelujah, and the responsibility that he gives you that comes along with it, because, because to who much is given, hallelujah, much is required, uh, hallelujah, that, that you are going to be able to work it out and please God in these last days as we approach the soon coming king. My God. And so here, and, 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 and so remember, it's not by might, <laughs> and it's not by power. It's not by your own strength you can do this. It, what I found out, and I'm sure some of y'all can testify to this, is that when you have depleted your own strength, when you have said, Lord, here I am, and I invest my time and my energy and my focus and everything that I got within me towards the pleasing of your will, towards the forwarding of your will, hallelujah, you will get to a place to where you deplete out, but then here comes the strength of the Lord because it's not by your might, it's not by your power but it is by my spirit saith the lord i wish i had a church up in here to talk back to this light-skinned preacher because i feel like preaching this morning god is going to give you a strength that you have not yet had in your life that's why he's pulled you out that's why he brought you from the dungeon that's why he pulled you out of dark places that's why he kept you from depression. That's why you've gone through your ups and downs, but you're still here. It's because God is about to work a work in these last days, and he's going to do it through you. He's going to do it through you. He's going to do it through you. He's going to do it through us. He's going to do it through us because not one man can do this thing. Not no one woman can do this thing, but he called all. He said, who is there among all of his people? Who is there among all of his people that are all in? My God. Somebody say, I'm here. And I'm all in. Fast forward, they rebuild the temple. They, 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 they are, they return to Jerusalem to worship and unfortunately fell back into idol worship, and we see and know how the pattern goes, but watch this. Here's what happens. Uh, the prophecies begin to cease, and there is silence. Silence. Silent years. No prophetic voice anymore. No, no more hearing from God like we used to. There was, a, there was a silence in the prophetic until a forerunner came named John the Baptist. John the Baptist comes on the scene, and he starts preaching what? Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent because the king is getting ready to come. 
Turn from your wicked ways. Come to the Jordan River. Let me bury you in this water with repentance. And as you come up out the water, behold, you will be ready for when the Messiah comes. And all of a sudden, a man, a, a kind of a scruffy looking man, it, it wasn't pleasurable to look on to. He didn't really have any type of attractive nature to him, comes walking to John the Baptist. And John the Baptist says, behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Y'all follow me? Y'all walking with me? I need you to think through this message. Hallelujah. The, the, the Messiah, King, comes as a lamb, and he too is buried in the water through baptism. And begins to preach, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. In other words, God was going to set up his kingdom then, but because he already with foreknowledge knew his own people would reject him. Carried out his ministry, and the king went to the cross. We know this. The Lamb of God died for our sins and rose. Is that right? That's the gospel message we preach. And he rose as a, and ascended, and listen, he is now saying, where out of all of the people who will come to me now and return to me? Though your sins be as scarlet, I'll make them whiter than snow. Though, though your sins be red like crimson, I'll make it like wool. I will justify you and make it just as if you've never sinned. If you repent and are born again of the water and the spirit, if you repent and you take on the baptism in Jesus' name and be filled with the Spirit of God. If you turn to him with your whole heart, then he will bring you into the body of Christ because he's getting ready to return. Oh, y'all caught that? Y'all caught that? We have come back to the church because Jesus is getting ready to come back for the church. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as some do. Hallelujah. But get together and get yourself ready because Jesus is getting ready to come back for his church. He is getting ready to return for the body. Well, pastor, they've been preaching that a long time. Yeah, just like Noah was saying it was going to rain for a long time. What happened? It rained. Everybody was welcome to come into the ark, but only a few did. Look at somebody say, I'm one of the few. <laughs> oh, I'm one of the few. I'm in the ark of safety this morning. And if you aren't, I would encourage you to get in quick because the door is about to be shut. How do you know that? Well, because like I said earlier, God is a God of patterns. God fulfills his patterns. And there's all these different feasts in the, in the Old Testament. There's seven great feasts of Israel. Four of them have already been fulfilled by Jesus. The next feast to be fulfilled is called the Feast of Trumpets. The Feast of Trumpets is when they took two silver horns, and they would blow one, and that one horn would be to gather the people, and they would blow the last trump. And all the people that they brought together would take off and go somewhere. Oh, y'all ain't catch that at all. And so the Feast of Trumpets just happened yesterday in Jerusalem, and the rabbi, yes, the new year, took the shofar and blew it, blew the trumpet to gather the people of God together to think where God has brought them from to repent and get their hearts ready because, see, the Jews are expecting the Messiah to return to set up the kingdom. But the church, who is the invisible kingdom of the living God on earth, is waiting for the return of Jesus Christ, not to the earth, but in the air because the dead in Christ shall rise first and those that are alive and remain shall be caught up together when when at the at the last trump at, at, at the last trump some people have took the scriptures and have unrightly divided them because they say where it says at the last trump, they're referring to the book of Revelation. But that's not it. Because we're going to be gone before the, oh, y'all. We get to escape what's about to happen in this world. If you think this pandemic was something, they're going to be trying to put every type of mask on. They're going to be digging holes in the ground trying to hide. But they won't be able to hide from the wrath of God. 
But we will be caught up together in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air before that happens at the last trump. The Feast of Trumpets is two trumps. It's the first trump that calls the dead in Christ up. It's the second trump that transforms us and calls us into the air. Look at somebody say, he's getting ready to return. We have returned because he's getting ready to return. And so then, and so then, and so then, since we have returned from exile, what is it that we need to do? We need to prepare, and we need to build, and we need to plant, uh, and we need to work, uh, and we need to evangelize. Uh, we need to reach souls. Uh, souls need to be saved. It ain't time to sleep. I know we got comfortable watching our morning services online with our pajamas and our onesies on and hallelujah saying that we're doing the work of the Lord via internet. But it is time for the church to wake up thou that sleepest and rise from the dead because Christ is calling his people to return and we got to be ready for when our Lord comes. Did, did not... Did, did not our Savior say that two shall be in the field and one will be taken and one will be left behind? Two shall be in the bed and one shall be taken and one left behind. Did not Jesus Christ say that, hallelujah, you, you would be somewhere when you get back home, that person ain't going to be there no more? That could be today. That could be today. We could all disappear right now and everybody wondering why folk that said they were going to connect with me and go out to eat later on, even though they didn't come to church. We could go to Walmart. You go to Walmart, but you can't come to church. Now, I ain't hitting nobody, but I am. Because God just put in my spirit. I told you, I'm just one of the preachers. You know what I'm saying? I always, I always been radical. But if you could go all these other places, ask God to stir your spirit like he stirred Cy Cyrus. Because it is time. It is time. And there's ways to do this, but it is time. It is time for God's people to come together like we've never had before. Hallelujah. To do what God has planned for us. Why? Because time is almost up. I'm si time is really almost up, y'all. It's really almost up. I, my, my only prayers is like what my wife said, like, Lord, just please, like, delay your coming. Or like, please, Lord, just give us a little time. Let the time frame in our mind be, be like, let it not be yours. Because the way I see it, I think Christ's coming, like, really soon. To where I don't think we'll have even the chance to build next to it. But if so be God delay and we have that time frame, what are we going to do with that time that God has given us, this space and time? Because sometimes we get comfortable during the return. We're back to do the same thing. We're going to build the walls. We're going to build the church. We're going to get some folk up in here worshiping God. But then what? But then what? How does that now translate over into our daily lives when you are in your schools, when you are at your jobs, when we are uh, 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 in life just in general doing what we do? How does that translate over and how do we bring the gospel of grace to these people that are lost. And let me tell you something. If this world has ever been lost, it is, it is really lost right now. This world is so lost that it is not time to play with our soul salvation or theirs. We have returned not only to rejoice for the fact that God has brought us back together, but we have returned to be about our Father's will. Let me tell you one more thing, and then I'm almost done. Christ is going to take us out of here. There's going to be seven years. It's called the time of Jacob's trouble. Some people call it the great tribulation. When a one world ruler is going to rise up in three and a half years into his reign, Satan will be kicked out of heaven, and he will embody this one world ruler. And he will then become the Antichrist. And at the end of those seven years, we're going to return. <laughs> Give me whatever key I'm preaching in. And, and after that seven years, the Bible says that Jesus Christ is going to come on a white horse. 
and all of us with him and we are going to have white robes and we're going to be on horses too and we are going to return where back to the same earth why because he is setting us up as kings and as priests that we might reign and rule with him forever So, 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 so you see, so you see, so, so, so the return to Jerusalem took place and, 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 then, and then God, God was stirred in the heavens and, and took off his royal diadem and came down through 42 generations, uh, embedded himself in flesh and lived and died and rose from the grave that we might be saved, uh, went to the heavens and now he's going to return for the church. Uh, and now when he returns for the church, uh, we're going to have a marriage feast. Uh, we're going to have a celebration uh, in the heavens. And when we get married to our Savior, when he put that ring on our finger in the heavens uh, and we're sitting at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Uh, hallelujah. It's called the reception. Uh, you know when you get married, uh, you have a reception. Uh, we're going to be in this great reception. Uh, and then it's going to be time for a honeymoon. And we are going to return. Uh, they thought they got rid of us, but we ain't going nowhere. We ain't going nowhere. We don't die. We multiply. Oh, y'all ain't, y'all y'all We don't die, we multiply. You can't get rid of us, Satan, but we gonna get rid of you. Our God has got the victory, and you do too. You ought to stand on your feet right now because God is getting ready to return. And we are back in the house. And we are ready. We are ready. Ooh, Jesus, we are ready. Jesus, did, he didn't say, get ready. He said, be ready. So I come at a moment you least expect. I'm going to come when they're building houses. I'm going to come when they're marrying and giving into marriage. I'm going to come just like the thief that kick in your door in the middle of the night when you least expect it. I'm going to bust up in the world and I'm going to take my people up out of here. I, I, we, I can't, I, I just, I can't articulate it like I want to. But we have returned from exile that we might build the house of God. What is the house of God? It is not this building. It is his people. The church is the body of Christ. We are called to build the body again. This is the last chance for the body. This is the last chance for the body. We are in the Laodicean period in Revelation chapter 3. We are in the last part of the church age. This is our last opportunity. Somebody messaged me on Facebook, I think it was last week, he said, Pastor, do you think there's going to be a great end time revival? I said, well, God is always about reviving his people. But if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray. See, we won't see revival unless we repent. Unless we are godly sorry, we ain't going to see no revival. As much as God wants to bring it, he cannot break his law. There must be repentance. Repentance ain't shouting. Repentance ain't dancing like we was praising God. We're just showing God how much we love him and so thankful to be here. But repentance is when your heart is broken towards God. And, and, and even being saved, you look back over your life and you start looking at yourself. You don't look at nobody else. And, and, and you say, Lord, help me to turn away from these things that I'm weak in and, and strengthen me, Lord, and give me enough Holy Ghost that I can live holy and that I can have enough oil up in my vessel so that if you were to come back right now, I would be ready. I will be ready when you come. Anybody want to be ready when Jesus, when Jesus, when Jesus, when Jesus, when Jesus, when Jesus, when Jesus comes, uh, anybody want to be Holy Ghost filled uh, when he comes? Uh, anybody ready? Repent. Repent. All of us got to repent. 
And if you have, if you have not been baptized in Jesus' name, you must be born again of the water and of the Spirit. Baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And the Bible says you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost that puts you in the body. That puts you in the building. That's not made with man's hands. We must repent. And ask God to do it. Ask God to save our children. Ask God to save our children. Ask God to save our families. Ask God to save our enemies. I don't wish eternal damnation on nobody. I want my enemies to get saved. I want God's enemies to get saved. Why? Because all of us was born enemies to God. But he saved us. So God is in the saving business. And we have returned. We have returned. Anybody ready to do this work? We have returned to do some real work now. What's, what's, your, what's your paycheck going to look like? You could give yourself the biggest raise <laughs> by doing the work of God. What I mean by that is the best thing you can invest in is the kingdom. Your heart, your soul, your mind, your body, every single thing you got needs to go to him. God wants all of us, everything we have to offer. And that which we can't do, he will empower and enable and supply us to be able to do. Mm. Yeah. We want to see the miracles. Let's repent. We want to see the glory that we preach and talk about all the time, but like really see the tangible presence of God. We must open our hearts like never before and repent and turn to him because he loves us. He loves you so much. He loves us unconditionally. And all he's doing is calling your name. He knows your name, but he's calling you. Just like he called me when I was 18 years old, right off the streets. Y'all know my story. Facing 77 years in prison. Moves on the heart of the judge and all my charges are dropped. And I hit the club like that same weekend. Talking about I done got off 77 years. Still ain't give God no glory, honor. I even know him. But he knew me. Moved across the street from an apostolic Pentecostal church. Walked up in there on a Sunday morning. While they was praying. And they were speaking in tongues. And I said, Lord, I done got up in the cult. I better not come back here. Sat all the way in the back. But God was drawing me in and I heard the good news that Abraham no matter what you've done all of the evil you've done against me and my people against your mom against your family all of that stuff Abraham I'm calling you in. I suffered I bled I died and rose for you when I heard that message I came back Sunday night sat on the front because I was ready. Got baptized that night in Jesus' name. Got filled that Friday with the Holy Ghost in my apartment speaking in tongues all night long. Does it take all of that? Yes and more. Yes and more. So let September 20th be a pivotal moment in our lives forever that this day will not go down in history as another Sunday morning service that this day 
will be the day that we fully give everything we have to him. And I guarantee you, we're going to see God work in us and through us and bless us and use us and all for his glory. All for his glory. And he's going to return and then we're going to come back and he's going to set up this earth for us to live in forever. Remember when Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you, that when I come, you will be with me also? Yeah. Let's get ready to be with our Savior forever. Now we're going to do prayer a little bit different today. We're going to have corporate prayer collectively. We're not going to connect hands right now, but we are connected. Trust me. Y'all feel connected this morning? It, it's so good to see y'all this morning, by the way. It's really good to see each and every one of you this morning. But we're going to have a corporate prayer. And if there be anybody that wants individual prayer, you want me to pray with you individually, I'm going to ask that when we do benedict our service, when we dismiss, that you just stay seated. And then as we have our, our uh, team lead you out from the back, one row at a time, uh, those that stay behind and want prayer, I'll call you up one by one, and I'll pray with you up here. And then, uh, then you can you know, head home. And don't, and don't go home and just enjoy the rest of your day. I'm going to the woods to get ready for some deer. But I'm going to the woods to meditate on the goodness of God. I'm telling you, I get in them woods and God be speaking to me. Go home and think about how, how, how much he loves us. Man, he loves you so much. Yeah, man. He loves you so much. Don't think he's overlooked you. Don't feel like he's overlooked you. He sees you. He loves you. He's not overlooked you. Let us pray. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, only you can do something like this. Only you can do something like this. Only you can bring your people back together like this. In every church edifice, Lord, in every building where your people are gathered together again or preparing to gather together. And even for those that never shut their doors, Father, you've led us all in, in different ways. And we thank you for giving us an ear to hear what thus saith the Lord. Father, I thank you for protecting all of these people in here. I thank you for keeping them during this pandemic. Father, even those that contracted the virus that did not die, we thank you for keeping them alive. Hallelujah. And those that passed on, we ask that you would send comfort to their families. But Father, right now, you brought us together for this return. Lord, Lord, let this message not just enter to our minds, but let that far journey from the mind to the heart be a short one this morning and let it drop deep into our hearts that we may never, ever, 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 ever forget this word this morning. Lord God, help us to understand just how, how, how precious these times are. Help us to understand just how close we are to your return. And Father, I'm asking you this morning that as you did with King Cyrus, that you would stir up the spirit of the living God on the inside of us like never before. Let us, let us adopt a new prayer life. Let us take on a new devotional life. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, let us praise you like we've never praised you and let us work like we've never worked. Let us labor for the gospel like we've never labored. And some you have called to be apostles. And some you have called to be prophets. And some you have called to be pastors and teachers and evangelists. However you have called us, you have called us. We want you to make us and help us and shape us and mold us and use us for your kingdom. For the king's dominion. Let the invisible kingdom in your body be manifested to the world in these troublesome times. And, and 
Savior God, save. Save us. Hosanna. Save us. Save us from the wrath to come. And we'll forever give your name praise and give your name the glory and give your name the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Do y'all receive that? Amen. Can y'all put your hands together? Now, I want to say, too, that if you want to make First Fruits your church home, then you can be seated as well. And anybody that wants individual prayer, I will pray for you after everybody departs the sanctuary. Uh, and remember, if you have not given or if you have your, like an a offering you need to drop off, the deacon will be holding the basket. I want to just, again, thank you for the tangible love that you pour into this house to enable us to do what we have to do for God's work. We really appreciate it. We really, I, look, I know it has not been easy, but you gave even when you didn't have a whole lot. I, I watch and I see everything that comes in this house. And I just, I really want to say from God's heart, from my heart, thank you, thank you, thank you. We didn't have to close our doors and shut down. You know what I'm saying? We closed the doors and renovated. Because God has worked through you. And he that has begun a good work will complete it. He gonna complete it. He started it. God don't start now. He don't finish. Yeah. Yeah. So anybody that wants individual prayer or you want to make this your church home, I'm just going to ask you to be seated. And then everyone else uh, who's prepared to leave, then um, from starting from the back, you're going to make your way out. You're going to follow Sister April one row at a time, though. So she'll call on your row. And then she'll escort you out. She'll make sure you know where to go. Amen? You don't have to stand up the whole time. You can wait till she call on your robe. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen? And we'll be right back in here next week. Bring, bring your family. Bring your friends. I usually hug people and love up on them. But I'm just.